How To is brought to you by Progressive. Are you thinking more about how to tighten up your budget these days? Drivers who save by switching to Progressive save over $700 on average, and customers can qualify for an average of six discounts when they sign up. A little off your rate each month goes a long way. Get a quote today at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. National annual average insurance savings by new customers surveyed who saved with Progressive between June 2020 and May 2021. Potential savings will vary. Discounts vary and are not available in all states and situations. I'm at a crossroads in my life and I've been struggling with this decision for like a year one week I decide, yes, I'm going to pull the trigger and do it. And then the next week I'm like, no, maybe I should think about it some more. And I'm just really frustrated. Welcome to How To. I'm Amanda Ripley. So for those of you who don't know, this is how this show works. Every week we take one of your hardest questions, something you're really struggling with, and then we scour the planet to find the perfect person to workshop it alongside you. Yeah, so I'm Tiffany. I, um, I'm i really ready for a fresh start, and I, I want to start new in a new place, but I don't want to make a bad decision because it's an emotional decision. Like, if you don't have a really smart dad, who do you go to with the big questions <laughs> in life? And how do you... Or mom, or mom. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can't go to either one of my parents. And frankly, I'm not sure they would have given me good advice anyway. So. <laughs> okay, let's be honest, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, you come to us. You call how-to. That's what you do. You do exactly. the right thing. <laughs> to move or not to move, that is the question that Tiffany is grappling with today. Right now, she lives in a small town in southern Oregon. It's in this beautifully wild region with the greatest name, which is the Rogue Valley. The thing is, it's pretty remote. I grew up here. It's a small town. There's not enough culture. There's not enough anything. The, the dating pool where I live is pathetic. I'm 52 now, and I'd really like to live with a guy that didn't live with his mother and did have his own car and possibly, potentially, had read a book at some point in his life. <laughs> it's a high bar. I mean, really. Right? Uh. <laughs> The closest place to go somewhere else is like four hours away. And I have seriously thought about driving up to Eugene just to have lunch at P.F. Chang's because we don't have P.F. Chang's here. (laughs) I would fully support that decision. but um... (laughs) Now, you might be thinking, it's just a move. What's the big deal? Is this the first time this lady has left Oregon? Well, no. In fact, Tiffany is not afraid of adventure, as you're going to hear. She loves skiing and hiking and ballroom dancing and animals. In fact, if anything, this woman has moved one too many times. So I left my hometown when I was 17, actually, to go live in Australia for six months. So I unfortunately decided to come back home. I was supposed to get married and stay there. But I came back and I actually married a man that my mother recommended. We moved seven times the first three years we were married. We moved from Oregon to Washington and then to Idaho and then back to Oregon, and then we moved to Arizona. And we moved to Arizona, I said, we are staying here. You must like it, because I'm not moving again. (laughs) That was home for a while, until Tiffany and her husband split up after 13 years of marriage. And eventually, in 2009, she ended up moving back to Oregon to care for her parents. And I thought I'd be here for a couple of years, and I'm still here. (laughs) (laughs) I inherited the family home when my parents passed, and I sold it last year when the market was super hot. Mm. So that was good. But Mm. I was thinking I'd buy a house within a year, but the market has been so crazy. So nearly 30 million Americans moved last year, according to census data. But now, between the high interest rates and the shortage of housing in a lot of places, many, many people are suddenly frozen out of their local real estate market. So for Tiffany, the already pricey market of the Pacific Northwest has gotten truly bonkers. I've been house hunting for a year, and it seems like the prices back east are like half what they are here. I have lived with roommates. I have couch surfed. I have rented rooms. I stayed with my parents for a while when they were at their sickest. But I haven't had my own spots. Like, I want my own little secure nest. So now she feels stuck. 
And like a lot of people trying to make a big life decision, like to quit a job or get married, the debate in her own head has left her feeling paralyzed. She talks herself into one decision and then right out of it. The worst case scenario would be like, let's say I decided to move to North Carolina and I don't like it any better than where I am now. And I've spent Mm. all this money to move there Mm. and I'm no happier there than I am here. The whole premise behind moving is just an emotional one. And usually when I make emotional decisions, they're, they're not great decisions. We've all been there. Sometimes we're just in our own head to see the problem clearly, the way somebody else might. My name is Nell McShane Wolfhart, and I am a decision coach. And you might be wondering what that is, and that's because I, I made it up. But I'm essentially <laughs> somebody who helps people make big difficult decisions in just a single session. One hour, one decision, that's it. Move on with your life. That's awesome. Can you actually come live with me? (laughs) (laughs) That would get very expensive to me. (laughs) It's an hourly rate. Um. (laughs) Now, you might be thinking, is this even possible? Can a stranger who doesn't know you help you make a life-changing decision in less time than it takes to bake a cake? On today's show, we're going to find out. We're going to see if we can help Tiffany decide if she should make a big move in 60 minutes or less. Stay with us. It's time to reboot your credit card with Apple Card. Apple Card gives you unlimited cash back every day on every purchase. It's real cash you can spend right away. No need to wait and wait for rewards. Apply now in the Wallet app on iPhone to see your credit limit offer with no impact to your credit score. Subject to credit approval. Daily cash is available via an Apple Cash Card or as a statement credit. See Apple Card customer agreement for terms and conditions. Apple Cash Card is issued by Green Dot Bank, member FDIC. Accepting an Apple Card after your application is approved will result in a hard inquiry which may impact your credit score. This episode of How To is brought to you by Season 3 of The Relentless, a podcast from Slate Studios and Century 21 Real Estate. If you're an entrepreneur, you know just how challenging it can be to run a business. It can feel like there are insurmountable hurdles at every turn. So how can you cut through the noise and use those obstacles as fuel for new opportunities? This season of The Relentless teaches you how to move fearlessly. Join author, entrepreneur, and returning host, Kristen Meinzer. She talks to everyone from athletes to CEOs who share how they have used strength and motivation to find success, even in the face of adversity. Be sure to check out the first episode where you'll learn how venture capitalist and author Catherine Finney became one of the first black women to have a successful seven-figure startup exit. Whether you work in sales or are simply interested in what it takes to transform fear into inspiration, The Relentless will inspire you to take that leap and move fearlessly. Season three of The Relentless is out now. Listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Now, before you kind of drill down, because I'm excited for you to take Tiffany through some of your process, but before we do that, how did you become a decision coach? Well, I have always been that person that friends and family came to with questions because they knew that I could give like a straightforward, very honest answer and Mm. I wasn't going to be waffling, right? Like I'm very decisive. And at some point I realized that I could be helping more people with this. Nell has been at this for over 10 years, and it's not even the only thing she does. You might have seen her name in bookstores or in the pages of the New York Times travel section. Right now, she lives in Uruguay, but connects with people all over the world who are searching for advice. And, I, you know, I put up a website and just test the waters and see if people would be interested. And it turns out people are very bad at making <laughs> decisions. <laughs> There's a lot of really indecisive people out there. And there's a lot of people who are normally very decisive, but for whatever reason, at some point in their life, they come up against one kind of problem and they just can't make a call. We figure out whether they need to change jobs or end a relationship or move to a new city or 
adopt a dog, whatever it is, whatever kind of big decision they're struggling with. And I just help them make that decision, pulling them out of that sort of like limbo state where they just kind of spiral and spiral and spiral Mm -hmm. and just let them get on with their lives. I mean, it's very appealing, this idea of one hour, big decision, boom. Like, how is that possible? (laughs) <laughs> well, by, the, by the time that somebody comes to a decision coach, right, they have already spent what I would say is way too much time thinking about a decision. Like, yes. Tiffany, you said that you've been thinking about this for a year, a full year. Um, so by that time, so they like, know a lot. <laughs> they yeah. know a lot. Like, you know, a lot of people love to research and they think, oh, I'll, I'll wait a little longer and I just read one more article or maybe the market yes. will change or there's like a million excuses to not make a decision. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I don't usually need more than an hour because my job is just to extract the most important parts, like the most, you know, Mm -hmm. essential parts of the decision and to figure out what's actually important to them. And if you listen hard enough, you can hear somebody telling you what they want. And I know the term permission slip comes up quite a lot on this (laughs) podcast, but that is actually something that I do a lot of the time is I figure out what the person wants to do and I write them a permission slip and tell them it's okay to do that. So, so you're like a decision-seeking missile. Like you go right to the thing <laughs> because you can see it more clearly, right? Than the, than the people who are in it. That's exactly that right? right. And I'm not, you know, I have no bias in it. I have no investment right. in it. While when you're making a big decision and you ask your friends and you ask your family, right. like all those people. They all people, have a vested interest. Yeah, yeah. They have a little, like a little interest in what you decide to do, even if it's just a small amount. To shift back here to Tiffany's challenge, is this different from other decisions that people bring you? I mean, it's not it's not a haircut, right? I mean, moving is like, it's hard to undo. How, how do you handle a decision this seemingly big and permanent? Well, first of all, I remind people that it is absolutely something you can undo. There are, there are almost okay. no decisions you make that you can't you know, pull back in some way or another. When it comes to a decision like moving and even buying a house, you know, the worst case scenario really is that you don't like it and you've lost some money. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you can move any, a million times if you want. You can move back to where you came from. You can try something new. So if you're in a position where you can make money, you know, you can take on some extra work or you have a well-paying job then it's really not written in stone. And it often can be worth trying out, especially if you have an idea buzzing around in the back of your head and it's been there for a long time. Usually those don't go away until you've actually tried the thing. Here's our first rule. Virtually no decision is truly permanent. Even tattoos aren't really permanent. Almost everything can be undone with enough time and resources. That said, not everyone has unlimited time and resources. Some decisions are much harder to undo. So how do you know if the decision is worth the risk? Could we take Tiffany through a bit of that process right now? Sure. You already asked some really great questions. You ask all my sort of normal background questions, Amanda. So I feel like okay. we're, getting, we're getting sorted. But one of the main questions I had for you, actually, Tiffany, was you said that your heart is in the Pacific Northwest. Can you tell me more about about what that feels like? Yeah. So um, I've lived here for the majority of my life. I love to hike. I love to kayak. I love horseback riding. I'm, I'm an outdoor person. And the Pacific Northwest is beautiful. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people come here for all those reasons. Um, I want to stay in the Pacific Northwest because it's a known factor. And the Carolinas absolutely aren't. And yet a big part of the appeal of the Carolinas is that it's it's not a known factor. It is an adventure. Like, this would be a truly fresh start. I wouldn't know anybody. It's a complete start over. Yeah, I mean, part of the definition of adventure is that there's something unknown in it, right? That it's like something brand new. It's a shiny new toy to play with. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, when we when we talk about um, if you bought a place or you stayed in the Pacific Northwest, are you would you be moving to a place where you had some kind of social circle or some kind of friends? I don't really have any family left. I have an uncle I don't speak to. I have a son that's um, starting his life out. So, I mean, most twenty two year olds don't want to hang out with their mom. For sure, um, for sure. 
And recently, I went to a four-day music festival in Eureka, California. It's a jazz festival. It's four days. It's the same bands mostly. And there's a lot of people that just go to them. So it was funny because when I was down in Eureka, I was like, oh my gosh, I haven't seen some of these people since 2018. And I, I mean, we're not close, but I knew them. And like the first day, we all just walked around hugging each other going, oh, we're so glad to be here. And I thought, man, if I go to North Carolina, I'm going to, I'm going to lose that. Like, I'm not going to see those people because they're on the West Coast. And if I stayed here, I'd at least get to see them once a year. But that also seems like a silly reason to stay someplace because it's once a year for four days. (laughs) Well, I would also, you know, point out that you could just fly back for the festival. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) So what Nell is trying to do here is to suss out the values that are important to Tiffany and to understand why they're important. A lot of times people list the things that they like about where they live or the things they like to do. And then I ask them, okay, well, how often do you see those friends? Or how often do you (laughs) go hiking? Or how often do you, you know, do those other outdoor activities that you think are so important? Um, And some of the time the answer is, yeah, once a year or, you know, once a quarter. So when we talk about this idea of you moving further north into the Pacific Northwest and taking advantage of all the things that you listed that you love about it. Like, realistically, how often do you think you would do that? Be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's a hard question to answer because so much has changed. Like, if you had asked me that in 2020, I would have been like, I hike a couple of times a month and I dance four nights a week. And then... COVID happened, and for me, cancer happened. During the pandemic, Tiffany was diagnosed with breast cancer. She's doing okay now, thankfully, but she's less active than she was, understandably, and it's riskier for her to be indoors. But outside has its own problems, namely wildfires. Especially in the Rogue Valley, of the last 12 years, we've only had two years without smoke, and Sometimes we have smoke from June through September, which means I I don't hike. I literally don't hike. I can't. So that's a deciding factor in not staying here because I don't, the fires aren't going to change that the, the world I grew up in when I grew up here, we'd have one bad fire every 10 years versus one good year every 10 years. Um, Yeah. That's a terrifying statistic. Right. And then, of course, in 2020, the fires came through and we lost like 3,000 homes in this area. And I spent three days with all of my stuff packed in my car just in case I had to flee. Wow. Yeah. What is the feeling like when you think about those days when you had your car packed, ready to go? That was, I mean, I've been through a lot. I've been through the death of my parents and I've been through a divorce and I've been through cancer and... That was probably the most scared I've ever been. All I could see was these huge billowing black clouds coming from the hill Mm. across the road from my home. And I didn't, the electricity was out, so I couldn't watch the news. I didn't know how far away it was. Um, I had enough time, unlike many people that I knew, to go through the house and take my important documents and take some clothes and fill the thing with water and dog food and... Mm. But it was terrifying. It was really terrifying. That sounds really harrowing. And it was worse for so many people. I have one close friend had time to stuff her mom in the car, get in the car, in their pajamas, and drive through a tunnel of fire to get out of paradise. They made it out. (sighs) I have another friend. She had enough time to grab her and the dog and nothing else. She lost her house and all of her clothes Mm. and all of her dance stuff and all of her photographs. And I don't want to buy a house here and then have another set of wildfires come through and actually lose my home. I know so many people that lost their homes in 2020 and it's heartbreaking. It is really heartbreaking especially knowing how many more people are likely to be displaced as a result of disasters linked to climate change. This is a bigger subject for another episode, but for now, we will link to a map in the show notes that's put out by FEMA 
that can help you decide where to move based in part on the hazard risks in different places in the country. For now, we can say we have a better idea of what Tiffany is trying to get away from. When we come back, Nell investigates what Tiffany is trying to go towards. And then she starts writing out some very big permission slips. Stay with us. As you know, we are living through this golden age of television. There is so much good TV to watch. I don't know if you're watching this one, Love is Electric or For All Who Charge. If you haven't heard of those shows, you're not alone because they're not actually TV shows. They're EV shows, shows about electric vehicles. And you can find them all at SceneOnEV.com. On SceneOnEV.com, you can learn that EVs have a dependable range and most EV models can travel 200 miles on a fully charged battery. EVs can be charged at home or at thousands of DC fast chargers nationwide. And did you know there are electric SUVs and sedans and hatchbacks and trucks and more for just about any lifestyle? EVs produce zero tailpipe emissions so you can live more sustainably. Credit, rebates, or tax incentives may help make EV ownership more affordable. Electric vehicles are worth watching. So head over to SceneOnEV.com to learn more. That's SceneOnEV.com. Stream on. This podcast is brought to you by Progressive. What's one thing you'd purchase with a little extra savings? A weighted blanket? Smart speaker? That new self-care trend you keep hearing about? Well, Progressive wants to make sure you're getting what you want by helping you save money on car insurance. Drivers who save by switching to Progressive save over $700 on average, and customers can qualify for an average of six discounts when they sign up. Discounts like having multiple vehicles on your policy. Progressive offers outstanding coverage and award-winning claim service. Day or night, they have customer support 24-7, 365 days a year. When you need the most, they're at their best. A little off your rate each month goes a long way. Get a quote today at Progressive.com and see why 4 out of 5 new auto customers recommend Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. National annual average insurance savings by new customers surveyed who save with Progressive between June 2020 and May 2021. Potential savings will vary. Discounts vary and are not available in all states and situations. It's time to reboot your credit card with Apple Card. Apple Card gives you unlimited cash back every day on every purchase. It's real cash you can spend right away. No need to wait and wait for rewards. Apply now in the Wallet app on iPhone to see your credit limit offer with no impact to your credit score. Subject to credit approval, daily cash is available via an Apple Cash Card or as a statement credit. See Apple Card customer agreement for terms and conditions. Apple Cash Card is issued by Green Dot Bank, member FDIC. Accepting an Apple Card after your application is approved will result in a hard inquiry which may impact your credit score. We're back with Tiffany, who's trying to decide whether she should uproot her life and move clear across country. And our decision coach, Nell, who's guiding her through this decision in 60 minutes or less. Well, Tiffany, I usually ask my clients to do a couple of exercises before we have the session. One of them is to imagine your ideal life in the future, right? Usually I ask people to come up with just a sketch of what they want their life to look like in one year, in five years, and in 10 years. And we don't have to do that fully right now or go into detail. But one thing I would like to know is... Are you interested in in finding a person to share your life with and finding like a committed romantic partner? Oh, I really, really am. <laughs> mm-hmm. And do you think that that would be more difficult to do in one of these locations? I feel like it's impossible to do where I am. And it's probably the biggest factor driving me out of here. When I got divorced in 04, it I was 34. It never occurred to me that I would still be single in my early 50s. At the time, I thought I could meet a guy. We could have a couple more kids. That'd be great. As you get older, it gets a little harder to... Like when you're 20, you have no expectations. And 
I don't know, my bar keeps getting higher and higher and higher. And... <laughs> well, I mean, earlier you were like, I just want to meet a man who doesn't live with his mother and has read a book at one point in his yes. life. So I'm not sure where the bar was before that, but... <laughs> Um, okay, well, that's good. I, I wanted to, to concentrate on that just a little bit, because I honestly find that for so many people and so many of my clients, like finding a, a loving romantic relationship really is a priority for them. And it's maybe the number one factor in their quality of life. Not for everybody, mm. obviously, but but for a lot of people, mm. especially That's interesting. post-pandemic yeah. isolation. Um, right. But people are almost afraid to prioritize that. And, you know, they're afraid to make decisions based around that. And I understand why. Like, it's incredibly unpredictable. It's difficult to meet somebody, I mean, at any age, but, um, you know, especially in middle age. And, you know, there are just so many factors that you can't predict. But I really urge you to to bring that to, like, the top of your priority list. If that's something that you, you're really looking for and you know it would make your life better, like, that should be a really a top consideration in where you move. How do I prioritize that? Well, when you talked about, you know, the dating pool where you are now being, you know, <laughs> arid, <laughs> um, <laughs> well, you know, even just you can even get on dating apps for like the places that you're considering living and, you know, put up a profile. It doesn't have to be a permanent profile. Do some swiping, see what it's like, even just like get on some Facebook groups and, and ask around just to get some general information. I'm sure there's ways that you can find out a little bit more. But honestly, I think getting on dating apps and just kind of looking at the prospects would be kind of helpful. I signed up for eHarmony like right before the pandemic. And I currently have it set for Oregon, North Carolina, and South Carolina. So I have been looking. So that, that was great. a great idea. This is idea. so funny. This is just what you said now. Like, she's already done all the research. Like, it's all there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've got all the answers. <laughs> yeah. I just yeah. don't know what You've to done do a lot of the legwork. <laughs> yes. Right, right, right. Yes. Don't worry. I so, know what to do with them. <laughs> yeah, good, good, good. Here's our next rule. If you're trying to make a change and one thing you're really secretly hoping for is a relationship or more friends, well, damn it, say so, at least to yourself. There are ways to prioritize this, too, in whatever you end up doing. But don't pretend that it doesn't matter. There's like a real epidemic of, of loneliness. And yes. people tend to call me, they don't call me about that. They call me about should I take this job offer? Or, you know, yeah. should I start my own business? Or, you know, should I get this tattoo removed? Yes, that was a real question. <laughs> but when I start probing a little more, it's like there's, you know, the main thing that would immediately help most people's quality of life is being more social, having more friends, seeing them ideally in person. Um, but people always put that on the back burner because they want to make these other big decisions first, right? And they think they'll figure out the, the, the relationship stuff, the friend stuff, the romance stuff later. But it really is like when people call me about a job decision, we make the job decision, but I often give them a little bit of extra homework, which was like, okay, and go to a meetup once a week or join a right. book club or join a running club because that is actually going to make have a higher impact immediately on your quality of life than all of these other things that you think are more important. Oh, that's fascinating. I guess it's, is it partly, do you think now, because our culture is pretty individualistic and we're all about, you know, sort of the job, the car, the things as, and so it's not, you know, even though everyone needs a sense of connection and community and that's really missing for a huge number of us, it's not something we talk about that explicitly? Yeah, it's not something we talk about. We think things like career are much more important. Yeah. Um, but it's, and also, you know, with people spending so much time online and remote working, it's like there are fewer opportunities to be around other people. And I've noticed that when you stop seeing other people in person, it becomes harder to get to do it again. It becomes more anxiety yes. producing. It becomes more stressful. I see this even with myself and I'm pretty extrovert. It's like if I go for a week and I haven't been out with friends mm -hmm. or seeing people, the idea of doing it suddenly seems more difficult and like, oh, it's just easier to stay home. Um, yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. I think too, um, like buying a car is a, is a mostly intellectual question. You can go on, you can read the reviews, you know what you want, you know what color, you, you can just order it uh, if that's what you want. It's easier in a way. Yeah. And yeah. finding a job is also kind of like, 
I have the skill set and it pays me what I need. And it's, it's an intellectual decision. Mm. The loneliness thing, it's so big and it's so intangible. It seems like an unanswerable mm. question. It's not like you can just get on Amazon and order a six foot one blue eyed dark haired <laughs> guy not, that doesn't have yet. a Presumably yes, Jeff Bezos yet. is working on that. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Okay, so one straightforward way to investigate what a decision might mean for your social life is to go there in person. Try to get the vibe of the place. If you can test drive a big decision in a temporary short-term way, do it. Here again, Tiffany is already all over this. I have arranged um, pet sitting jobs in North and South Carolina for six weeks starting the middle of November. So I'm going to be gone from Oregon from the middle of November until January 1st. Oh, you're going to test drive both states. Yeah, I told a friend of mine that I was thinking about moving. She's like, have you ever been there? It's like, no, but it's pretty much the only place in the world I would consider living that's not the Pacific Northwest. And she's like, well, maybe you should go there before you actually buy a house. <laughs> It's like, oh, yeah, that's that's an idea. That's valid. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, this is good. It's good. I got the suitcase. Yeah, I'm very okay. excited if and when I do move back. Oh, like, yeah. I will already know some people. In fact, one of the people has already said we might be able to work out a roommate situation if we hit it off. She also does ballroom dancing, by the way, which is Oh, my God. Off. Perfect. <laughs> what are the odds? That's amazing. <laughs> right? Well, you can so make maybe, like, maybe you guys you are going to fall some... in love. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> I can start summing up uh, if you guys want, unless there's anything else, Tiffany, that you think I need to know. No, I think, unless you have more questions, I, th I think I've given you all I've got. This has been pretty efficient. It's nice having uh, sort of other people to, to help ask questions, actually. <laughs> um, so I'll say that even in your email, you know, from the very beginning, you're caught between following your heart, no matter how scary the leap, and making do at home. And then in this conversation, you said, sometimes you just think, well, I'll stay here. It's fine. So those two expressions, like making do and it's fine, those are always red flags to me, you know, because they mean settling. They mean yes. like not doing the thing that you want to do, doing plan B. But I never want anybody to do plan B if plan A is still so achievable and right out there, like you just can grab it if you want. And I just love the idea that you are planning this trip, this six week trip to North Carolina, to, you know, to see these different places to really get a feel for it. And I strongly encourage you, if you make that trip, and you enjoy those places, and you think, yeah, I could live here, to do it, to take that leap. Because something that came up again and again in this conversation is the like expression fresh start. You said you want to start new in a new place. There is never going to be a period in your life where you have fewer responsibilities and more freedom than you have right now. Yeah, I totally understand that. In fact, I've, I've complained a few times because it's like, if everything's an option, how do you decide? <laughs> like, I don't, I have no limits. Like, but, but you don't, you don't actually don't have that problem. A lot of people come to me with that problem. I recently helped people choose a baby name from a list of 40 different options. And I helped somebody oh pick gosh. somewhere to live. And I said, okay, what's on your list? And he said, everywhere. Everywhere, <laughs> yeah. You've, oh you've picked, you have only two places. You have like really have narrowed it down. Okay, so at this point, Nell has heard enough. It's decision time. It has come through loud and clear to me in this conversation that you are really ready for a new adventure, you know, and that like moving somewhere, moving to the East Coast, to a beach town, somewhere new with great weather, like that is an adventure. That is a fresh start. And I think it's what you really want to do. It is. It is absolutely what I really want to do. It's It's been the fear of doing the wrong thing that has held me back. There's a quote, I don't know who wrote it, um, but you're standing on the edge of a cliff and you're thinking, what if I fall? And the response is, but what if you fly? And I feel like I've been there for a year, like I'm afraid <laughs> to jump, but I think I'm gonna fly. And 
this has been super helpful because you you have helped me trust my wings. Notice the main thing that Nell has done this whole time is to really listen. As she put it, people will tell you what they want. And we've actually found the same thing happens on this show. When people first reach out to us, whether it's a voicemail or an email, if we pay attention to the words they use, we learn important things. But sometimes it takes someone else, a friend, a mentor, a podcast, a decision coach, to point out these words to you. And maybe there's something reassuring in all of this, which is to say, we do know what we want if only someone will help us listen. One last thing that's very similar to that what if you fall, what if you fly thing. I often tell people, you know, when you're thinking about a decision and you're kind of catastrophizing about worst case scenarios, you're thinking, what if this happens? What if I hate it? What if I'm lonely? What if I can't get a job? And I just encourage you to make a tiny switch and just even to yourself, try using the words even if. So even if I'm lonely, even if I can't get a job, even if I don't like it. I like that. And then fill in the rest of the sentence, you know, and you'll find your brain coming up with plans and coming up with safety nets and coming up with, you know, things that you can do. And it just kind of restores your faith in yourself. Because as I said, you've been through a lot of hard stuff, um, not just cancer, but, you know, divorce and moving and lots of different things. So we know that you can do the hard things. And I just want you to rely on yourself for, you know, even if it doesn't work out perfectly, you're going to be okay. That's great. There is something very reassuring about listening to you now. I mean, this isn't even my decision, but like <laughs> when you just say- <laughs> You're feeling better about it yes, too, right? Yes, <laughs> I really am. <laughs> yeah. Thank you to Tiffany for coming to us with a big question. We cannot wait to hear how the test run in the Carolinas goes. Please keep us updated. Even if, to quote Nell, Everything isn't as dreamy as planned, or even if it totally is. And a big thank you to Nell for all of her pitch-perfect questions and precision listening. Make sure to check out her site, The Decision Coach. Do you have a problem we can help you solve in 60 minutes or less? Send us a note at howto at slate.com or leave us a voicemail at 646-495-4001. And who knows, we might have you on the show, even if... It takes more than an hour. If you like what you heard today, you know what to do. Give us a rating and a review and tell a friend. That helps us help more people. How To's executive producer is Derek John. Rosemary Belson and Kevin Bendis produced the show. Merritt Jacob is senior technical director. Charles Duhigg created the show. I'm Amanda Ripley. Thanks for listening. Electric vehicles are worth watching. With climate change and everything going on in the world, it can make you think a lot about our impact on the environment. Luckily, the site seenonev.com can teach you about electric vehicles, like how they produce zero tailpipe emissions so we can live more sustainably. Head to seenonev.com and stream on. This episode is brought to you by Best Buy. This year, let Best Buy be your holiday hype partner. Whether you're searching for exciting gifts, trying to snag the hottest holiday deals, or looking for ways to simplify the giving and receiving experience, Best Buy is here to help. Best Buy has a versatile assortment of impactful tech gifts, along with fast and free fulfillment options and great deals all season long. Maybe you're looking for an air fryer to help the foodie in your life unlock new recipes, or a new phone or camera for an aspiring filmmaker who's turning their passion into a side gig. Or you might be on the hunt for a new smartwatch to support a friend's wellness journey. No matter what you're looking for, Best Buy is your gifting destination for everyone on your list. And Best Buy makes it easy to get your gifts how and when you need them with free next day delivery on thousands of items, as well as same day delivery and in-store pickup options. Shop great deals on gifts now at Best Buy.